is it possible to actually experience just a very small part of the soul in the sexual act? If yes. you're somebody that is, you know, you're very connected with, yes. you, know, you can sort of float in and out of it, so to speak? Yes. And this is what happens for the majority of us, actually, is that we're floating in and out of a pure connection and then back into a physical connection because of the different emotional blockages that have occurred inside of us. Does that make sense? So, so a lot of times we are actually connecting at a soul level, but it's only for moments in time. It's not all the time. And in fact, in the end, what we'll see is that God actually created us where we have our sexual expression 100% of the time. So all the time you would be in a sexual, you would have a sexual expression relationship with your soul mate, is what God intended. Which is a very... You like that idea? You like that idea, right? Oh, yeah. Brings up a few emotions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. And we'll talk more about that as, as we go on today. All right. You want to say something about that? No, I just like your definition of sexuality. It's actually soulality. Yeah. So, so can you see that we're not really talking about sexuality, we're talking about soulality, or the connection that occurs at the soul level. Does that make sense? So it's like, yeah, because of course we're all attached, as he tells us all the time, if you can harness the power of your soul in the sex act, then it obviously becomes far more beautiful, more powerful, rather than just acting on those two. Yeah. And in fact, uh, if we look at it from God's perspective, God created you through a sex act. Like, so you, God actually ha had sex to create you, you could say. And all of us are therefore creations of God's, of God's desire to engage in sexual expression. And procreation is one of the results of sexual expression. It's not the only result but it's one of the results of sexual expression. So the whole, I, the whole thing that we exist in the first place is a result of the sexual expression of God. And if you start looking around at yourself at the universe, almost every living thing you can think of has some kind of sexual expression, doesn't it? Plants, birds, animals, even very, very small living creatures all have some kind of sexual expression. Very few of them are hermaphrodites, in other words, having sex with themselves to procreate. Almost all of God's creations are actually involving more than one entity in order to create. Usually two, of course. Which is part of God's way of teaching us about what sex is about, too. Alright, so, God loves sex. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> can you? Can you say something about is is God's expression then hermaphroditic or how does how does God have sex? You remember that God has masculine and feminine qualities. And if you can think of it like this, at the moment you are a half of the soul. And when you have sex, you have sex with the other half of the soul. Whether it's your soulmate or not, you're, you're engaging in sexual interaction with another half of your soul, of, of a soul. Now, the two of you are sort of like a part, aren't you? Now, if you could think of God's soul as those two halves together constantly as one, then basically you start understanding what sex is for God. Does that make sense? And you will actually be in that state in the 22nd sphere, in the spirit world. In the state where you're actually having sex constantly because you are now joined with your soulmate. And so God's constantly having sex. If you can think of it that way. Yeah. 